Welcome back. I hope you had a nice, long, relaxing break. Let's review the letters we've gone over so far, shall we? All right, so, so far, from reading right to left, we've gone over alif, ba, ta, tha, and gim. Now, when you practice these letters in order, kind of like reading the alphabet, be sure to close your eyes and visualize what the letters look like as you say them. Better yet, try to write them down on various pieces of paper and writing right to left, of course. As you say their names out loud, be sure to practice out loud. It helps. I promise. So you think you're ready for two letters at once? Again? Well, here they are anyway. Look familiar? These letters look identical to gim you learned earlier, except for the dot placement. These letters are called ha and ha. Ha looks just like the gim except the dot is absent, while the ka has the dot placed above. Both of these letters follow the same mighty morphin rules as the gim. So let's get right down to how to read these suckers. The first word on the list is habib which means loved one. If you wish to call someone your Habib, how would you do that? That's right, Habibi, adding the E sound to the end. Now we have the word Hogra. Hogra is an Arabic word for room or chamber. Next, we come to Khan. Khan is an Arabic term for traveler's inn. It's also part of a famous bazaar district down in Cairo called Kana Khalili. Seriously, if ever you're in town, you've got to check it out. This place is awesome. Finally, we have the word Kharug, or exit. Notice the difference in how the two letters are pronounced. The Ha is more of a straight H sound, whereas the Ka is a heavy breathing sound. The H sound that really doesn't appear in the English language anywhere at all, so practice it a lot. <laughs> all right, ready? Okay, wipe off your screen from all the spittle and let's continue. Let's look at them right away. Now, the pronunciations for dal and thal are very similar. Dal is a D sound, where thal is like a TH sound pronounced more like a D. Dal, thal, dal, thal, dal, thal. At least, this is the best way that I can describe it. Again, I'm not a native speaker, so it's probably a good idea to look around if you're trying to find somebody that actually knows how to pronounce these words. I'm learning right alongside you guys. The first word here is one we should all be familiar with. Doctor. It's pronounced the exact same way, except typically with a bit of a roll on the final R. Doctor. The next word is a great vocab word because it's easy to remember. Damn, I'm bleeding. The Arabic word is dam, which means blood. Damn, I'm bleeding. I've never said that in such a cheerful tone before. The last word here is taki, which means smart. If you want to call a woman smart, she would be takia, not taki. Listen to the difference in pronunciation of both the dal and the thal, as well as the masculine and feminine forms. All right, we're already on to our last two letters of the video. Are you ready for them? Go, because they're there now! Again, these letters are pretty simple, although they are disjointed letters, which can only be joined by preceding letters. They are called Ray and Zay. Let's dig right in. Ray and Zay are pronounced just how you'd expect them to be, like the English R and Z. The first word here is Russia or as it is spelled phonetically, Russia. Notice the disjointed ray at the beginning. Next we have the Egyptian word for Egypt, Miser. Here, the ray is connected to the end. Remember, disjointed means no letters following the letter are connected. Finally, we have the words Zug and Zuga, meaning husband and wife. Again, notice the Tarmabuta at the end of the word Zuga, making it a female spouse. And that's it for this lesson. If you need to go back and practice the letters from the last lesson, just click back and once you're ready to move on to the next section, just wait for the next video in the playlist or 
click next. Don't forget to practice, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you at the next video.